happy November 16 week to you, John. Obviously, a, an important week in, in, in your life, the life of Australian football fans, um, the life of Australian football. Um, do you take a second to sort of reflect on that day when it rolls around each year? I know certainly as a, as a fan who was there that night prior to my career, it's certainly something that I look back on fondly uh, every time the anniversary rolls around. Yeah, it's not like I look at the date, Dave. I, I what you I get happens, reminded of it each year. Don't worry <laughs> yeah, about okay. that. I get reminded of it. But what I love about it is uh, reading people's stories of where they were in that moment because everyone remembers um, what they were doing, if they were, where they were watching the game. Some great stories about watching the game from other parts of the world. Um, great stories about the people at the stadium that couldn't watch, that were you know that were closing their eyes or hiding, and then you know hugging strangers. It's a uh, you know, to be part of something that meant so much to everyone, uh, that's something special that, uh, you know, I'm lucky that I was uh, part of that night. Dave, John's just being it. very humble because I have actually seen the calendar and diary in his phone. It's got <laughs> on his calendar, it's got wife's birthday, kids' birthday dates, anniversaries, and in big bold writing, <laughs> the World Cup penalty. <laughs> Bridgie, what you haven't seen is that uh, my alarm clock, I wake up to watching that every morning. <laughs> on repeat i love it and why not me why not what's the funniest moment or the sort of the time you've been caught out by surprise or someone just run up to you or tapped you on the shoulder or, or just come to you with that moment over the last 15 years it must be almost like a uh just a repeat that every couple of weeks that just comes up somewhere well, someone asked me about uh, when were you most surprised? And I think it was, uh, this has gone back a few years now. I was going to, uh, I was down in Melbourne and uh, it was a, I think it was a Melbourne Cup event and it was quite late into the night. And I was coming up the ele- elevator and Cam Smith was coming down and, he, and the door opened and he just went, Aloise! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, was that Cam Smith that just did that to me? <laughs> And then we looked at each other and we walked off. So it was um, quite funny. That, that moment was... might be in his new book. You never know. <laughs> you never know. I think there's a bit more interesting stories in his new book. Uh, very good. As, as I said, a great moment. And, uh, you know, I think part of the reason why we're able to sit here talking about football now is in this industry is so much to do with that, that famous night. So long may we celebrate it going into the future and uh, hopefully have many more moments like that to come. Big week for, for you and I, big week for all Australians. Uh, it's, it's anniversary time. I'm not talking about our anniversary. We've already covered that off so far a few episodes ago. 15th, anniversary, 15th year anniversary of that shootout in 2005 against Uruguay. I'm celebrating with a, a Uruguayan red. And, you know, 15 years ago, I'd just woken up 3 a.m. as a you know, kid and I was in grade five. Dad and I were making our World Cup eggs where we'd get the frying pan and pour, you know, we'll like crack an egg, eggs to, you know, sort of replicate the, the uh, football. Uh, Mum was at work, but she was watching it. It was, it was an amazing time to be in Australia. Well, I mean, I was in Tasmania, but that still counts. But to be in Australia. <laughs> well, you said it, it yourself. Was, uh, you you yeah. said it yourself. Yeah, I was uh, just looking at you. I could tell. Actually, oh, 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 I mean, Tasmania. Uh, I could just see your Australia. face. Uh, it was uh, it was an amazing moment, but it's uh, it's probably time that we just take our hats off and go, mate. It doesn't get old. It really doesn't. What a what a massive moment for for our country. Yeah, it, it doesn't get old. It certainly doesn't. You know, like obviously, social media is like it's just flooded with with videos, memories, um, people's comments on that from from that day, fifteen years ago to this very day, which is. Uh, again, I, I have to pinch myself still. Um, and, and then when I see the video footage, the hairs on the back of my neck step, I stand up and there's this real tingle that goes through your body. And I, I just has never stopped um, every time I see footage of it and any time we ever talk about it. Um, uh, there was a couple of posts on, on, uh, on Twitter and I, I was tempted because it said like, where were you on this day? And I was tempted on a couple of occasions to just add a little bit of where I actually was on that day. Oh, you've <laughs> got to no, do it. Come on. No, no, you've got to do it. No, I just thought then, no, maybe sounds a little bit arrogant. Sounds a bit, I don't know, big, big time. So I just, I haven't, I've, I've, I've uh, refrained myself from, from adding anything to it. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's very special, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. it was a moment that reshaped really um, 
the the path of Australian football. And, and, and uh, however, how, wherever we think football may be in Australia right this moment in time, um, you know, let's not forget that we've qualified um, for what is it now four World Cups in a row, yeah. um, which is pretty amazing since you know. 32 years was the wait between the first one and the second one in 2006. Um, and we are still to this date the first and only team, only country to have qualified for a World Cup via a penalty shootout, which, you know, is that not right? Too bad either. I yes. didn't know that. That's amazing. There you go. Yeah. And what a shootout it was. It had everything. And you know, I watched it, you know, this morning when I woke up, because as he said, it's just sort of flooding social media at the moment. Your second save in particular was one of the be- best saves I've seen. You, I was looking at it <laughs> thinking, thinking you've not left your line. The ball was slightly behind you. It was quite high up. It, it kind of had everything. I mean, do goalkeepers come up to you and actually congratulate you on, on not just the save, you know, because I assume most people were congratulating you on the saves, but technically I thought it was incredible. Uh, no, no, not really. Um, it it was more about the moment. Aren't you? You're embarrassed. No, it was more, it's more about the moment. And, you know, were they the best? No, they weren't the best saves ever. It, it's more about the, the actual moment and, and the meaning of the saves than anything else and the pressure that went along with it all and everyone playing their part from, obviously, all the players, the staff, everyone involved, directly involved, but also the scene was set um, for that very evening. I mean, you know, you could argue and say, well, the scene was set every four years in Australia and every four years we generally went away heartbroken. And, and that's very true. So every, every time we got to this stage of World Cup qualification, the scene was set. It just so happened that we were able to take it that one step further. Um, and, and looking at it, you know, it was the, it was the time, uh, the last time we had to qualify through the, the, the really difficult path of, um, firstly, winning Oceania, then and 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 then you know playing off against South America. Yes, you can still do the same thing now you can, through Asia, but I think it's a fairer way of trying to qualify now through Asia for for Australia, because you can win the group uh, at the final stages and then you qualify directly. As we all know, you can finish second and you qualify directly. Whereas you win Oceania, you never qualify directly. And we did for six months, but there was no qualifiers and no World Cup on. So then they changed it again that, that Oceania only, only had half a place, which, which I, I have to agree with. I think it's a fair enough thing. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's for so many reasons. The fact that we played Uruguay again uh, four years after the experiences that we, we had in Uruguay, how we were badly treated. And then again, you know, it's, it's South American football. And, and, and that's another thing. I, 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 I take a lot, a lot of pleasure out of the fact that and, and gratitude that I was able to play in a World Cup qualifier in South America. I, I had my first experience of it back in uh, 93 when, when I was first involved with a national team and I was on the bench for the second leg against Argentina in Buenos Aires. So I got a taste of what it was like to play a World Cup qualifier in, in, in a South American country. But the, the response from the Argentinians was very, very different. And I think that was because they just, they just knew they were going to be this. I don't think they ever thought us as a genuine threat. Even though the score was 1-1 in Sydney and we only lost 1-0 in, in, in Buenos Aires, there wasn't the hostility of being in Argentina like there was when we went to Uruguay. So it was a very, very different feel about it. So fast forward the, the, you know, the, the time to 2001, firstly, the, the immense hostility that went towards us. That was our, my first real experience of the cutthroat nature of, of, of playing a World Cup qualifier in that part of the world. And I look back at it you know, with, with uh, incredible amounts of pride and, and excitement and so glad I got to experience it. Even though that first time round was really disappointing in the end, it still put us in such a better position four years later. And, and everything fell into place. The Federation learnt uh, not to go there too early, not to spend any time, as, as little time as possible in Uruguay before the game. And after the game, we flew out straight away. The pathway to get back out of Uruguay was a direct one. Uruguay had to go via, I think, Miami or something like that. You know, it, everything aligned. Um, and finally, we aligned on the football pitch and did enough to get us over the line against a side that, I'll say it, like I probably said it every year whenever I ask this question about 
about the qualifiers, the team that believed that they, and players and a country who believed that they had the divine right to qualify for a World Cup. Um, and as we all know, nobody has that divine right. You have to earn it. So many reasons why you wouldn't want to change the, the script of the, the entire, you know, as you said there, the build up, the history. One thing, though, that I'm sure most people would, would want to change is the fact that it was heartbreaking every time I watch it back, seeing from one mark to another, you know, one mark had a great time in that shootout and, and the other mark didn't, didn't have a massively great experience in Dukes missing that penalty. And, and I just feel bad because he's had so many wonderful moments for the national side and so many great moments for club. But that is a shootout that will, as you've seen 15 years on, that will probably be continued to be played, you know, this time every year. And it's, it's such a shame that he, he didn't, you know, get the back of the net and, and to have that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, listen, that would have changed the course of history because Duke's scoring, um, I then saved the next one and the, well, the, the shootout would have been finished and John Alawissi wouldn't have had his moment, you know? Sure, yes. Um, <laughs> it, it, it all happens for a reason. And you know what? For Duke's to miss and us to still qualify, it's irrelevant. If Duke's misses and we don't qualify, then obviously it becomes a big story. But it's, it's, it's minor and everybody knows what a wonderful player Dukes was. Um, and, and that's just um, not even a blip. It's just something that happened, missed it, but we scored. And uh, sorry, we, we qualified and it's irrelevant. It's just part of the whole story of the way it unfolded. And um, I suppose it made it that little bit more dramatic, yeah. um, the whole penalty shootout experience. And um, I'm fortunate that I was able to save the very next one and then, you know, get us in a position where we had it in our own hands again. Um, and, and well, had a huge advantage, you know, Johnny scoring that penalty. And, and again, it fell to Johnny. Dukes wasn't someone who took regular penalties. So it, it wasn't necessarily a great surprise for me because he wasn't a regular penalty taker on weekends. Whereas Johnny, I knew Johnny was a regular penalty taker for Alaves. He'd scored in La Liga. He scored against Real Madrid. He, you know, he scored again in really, really high pressure situations from the spot. And there's a difference. There's a difference from scoring in open play like Dukes did freely to a penalty and let alone a penalty shootout with a berth at a World Cup uh, at the end of it and for the first time in 32 years. So, so everything on home soil, all that pressure. Yeah. So for me, it's just part of the story, but, a, a, but, a, but it's part of the story that I don't look at it in any negative way um, because you win as a team, you lose as your team, you... You know, you have a you have a setback, but you pick yourself up and recover, and you get through. And we got through as a team, and 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 he played a huge part in us getting as far as we did in the World Cup as well. Some great names in that lineup that have done some fantastic things for for club. But would you say, on the whole, that everyone on that day that would still fifteen years on be the best moment on a football pitch? It has to be the most, I think, the most dramatic, the most, the biggest impact on all of our careers at that particular moment, I think. I think, you know, there were a few players that would probably argue a little bit. Like, you know, Harry was already a big name in Australia. Um, you know, and, and I think that lifted his name even higher up in the rankings. I think everybody, a lot of people got pulled up along, along with him, not necessarily at the same level, but got pulled up. All of our names started to become more, more well-known. Um, we put football, soccer on the map in Australia. It goes down to this day amongst many people as still one of, one of the greatest sporting moments, events in Australian history, yep. which is saying something considering the, the, the history of sporting success that we've had as, as, a, as a nation. Um, so that night, like I said earlier on, reshaped football. Um, I, I grew up wanting to always obviously first you know you wanted to play football you wanted to play football because you loved it you wanted to play at the highest level you wanted to play in europe you wanted to play for your country then once you're playing for your country you want to qualify for a world cup and as a kid growing up i saw many failed attempts of qualification for a world cup then i was in, i was part of uh, a number of campaigns where we where we failed to qualify so to then be part of a successful campaign and the, and the first one in 32 years um yeah, it is incredibly special. And then I also have a lot, a lot of pride, I take a lot of pride out of being involved with three successful campaigns of qualifying for the World Cup, even though I only played in two of the World Cups, but I, I still played in all the games in the, in the third one for Brazil, but I just didn't go to Brazil. So 
I, I still take an enormous amount of pride um, from all those campaigns, but the tone was set by that 2005 victory against Uruguay on this very day. Well, I must say a big cheers to you, a big toast as we raise our, our glasses of red. Uh, we've had very different experiences of that game and many, <laughs> as you could probably imagine, but nonetheless, very special for all of us in their, in their different ways. So congratulations and happy anniversary, Mark. Thank you very much, man. Enjoying our YouTube channel? Be sure to subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.